Well, I'm with Simon Monoprio from Innovision Boats. Simon, we're celebrating 10 years of Innovision Boats. How did this all begin? So, so I was overseas doing a lot of sailing, um, and I came across a design called Wally, Wally Boats. Mm -hmm. Wally, and there's this boat I saw in, in the med called a Wally Tender, and it was a 40-foot carbon fibre thing that had a plumb bow, and I thought, that's pretty impressive. And then I had a, after a bottle of wine, I had a light bulb moment and went, shit, this will, this will fix a tin boat. And from that, that's what gave me the inspiration from where our hull design came from. Um, but the, the main driver, probably actually starting the boat building business or getting into boat building, was my mates dared me to, to build a boat because I went out on a, um, a pontoon boat that a mate of mine's old man had and wasn't very impressed. So alloy boat as well? Yeah, it was an alley boat. Yes, yeah, so I wasn't very impressed with its ride, its stability, its ergonomics for fishing. And yeah, so I, I after a few beers, voiced my opinion and my mates were like, if you Go think on. you know better, <laughs> Go build on. a Good boat. One. Um, and from there, I learned a lot quickly about the boat building industry and what's involved in, in building a boat. And yeah, So that first, that first boat was a bit of a challenge, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a lot of a challenge because um, the, the bottom sheets actually aren't developable and we had to develop a process to make to form the, the bow without actually having to roll the sheets and adding a whole chunk of work to it. So you, you embarked on this first boat, but you, you had a particular idea in mind, didn't you? It wasn't going to be a, a run-of-the-mill aluminium boat. No, no, it wasn't at all going to be a run-of-the-mill boat. We didn't actually, I didn't think of from an engineering construction point of view, I said, what does the hull actually need to look like to be the perfect hull? Right. And then we'd work out how to build it. <laughs> and yeah, that's taken 10 years. Right, right. So, so the, the first boat, I mean, I, I think for the first few boats you, you had, they were fabricated under uh, contract, weren't they? Yeah, so the first boat was fabricated in, in Henderson, mm -hmm. um, and then the next one at GFAB down in Tauranga. Right. Then I went across to New Plymouth um, to make Gary down there. He built five boats for me. Then we went to Wangarei, to Tongara Marine Fab. Um, yes. Luke and Kelly Surin up there. Okay. They built me 12 boats, I think. 12, 15 boats, and they, no, Luke and Kelly were awesome. They let me in the factory so I could actually work on the boats and and actually really start developing the, the um, engineering and the construction Be process. Because the boats, they, they have changed over the years, haven't they? Yeah. And you've developed the, the, the hulls and you've developed the, the aesthetics of the boats and, and all of that over that time. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it, it changed. The changes would, came about just from understanding the better ways to, to make a boat out of aluminium right. um, and, and leaning up the process but the last thing I wanted to do was change the aesthetics to the point that it was everything was just folded and just looked like another tin can. Um, so we needed to keep the aesthetics and with my background being super yachts, building, working for alloy yachts, it was, it was hard to focus on what's going to make it cheaper, it was more what's going to make it better. Right, right, right. Yeah. So from, from those you know, fairly modest beginnings, and I, I think you said to me that you know you only built one boat the first year that you were in business. Yeah. Uh, now there's 50 odd boats, 50 odd innovation boats out there. Yeah. Um, clearly it's grown year by year. Is, is that how you see it going forward as well? Yeah, so the first boats were just, the first one was a spec boat, sold it, and the next one was a spec boat, sold it, and then sold a couple more um, on, the, on the back of them. Right. But nothing was, built for stock really was all just built to order along the way because I didn't have the funds yes. to grow it. The business has been purely grown out of cash flow. Right. Great thing about it, I got no debt, um, which is good. Yes. Um, so yeah, and then we're doing 15, 16 boats a year at the moment and in our current factory we can grow to the 24 boats. Um, but right. we've got a, a reasonably young team. Steve's been with me, my fit out manager, he's been with me three and a half years now and it's the longest place he's ever worked ever at. Worked. <laughs> um, which is, I guess it means I can't be that bad a boss. Um, we have got another couple of guys who've been with me two, two years now and stuff, so. So and it's a relatively new factory you're in, isn't it? It's yeah. Rothwell Ave. Um, so yeah, the first factory was in, in Henderson, yes. Keeling Road, where the first boat was built. Right. Which is kind of ironic in a yes. weird kind of way. Yeah. And yeah, so we're there for just almost two years and then needed some more space. And yes. Now we're in, in Rothwell Ave in Rosedale with okay. 500 square metres. Good size, yeah, a good size factory, and you've got 10 staff, I believe, plus yeah. yourself. 10 staff, plus myself, um, and with that we can have five boats on the go at the time, two in fab, one at the painters, and two in fit out. Okay. So we okay. can get through a fair bit of work if... 
and and what what's changed for you, Simon, over that time in in the way that you or, or the sorts of boats that you're actually building now compared to what you were building ten years ago? What's changed is that the my clientele is definitely of the upper end of the market. They the boats are all you know majority of them all very optimised and, and right. specific, the specs you know have a very high specification, um, which is cool. The boats pretty much every boat looks awesome when it comes out of the factory. And obviously that has impressed the judges at Hutch Wilco Boat Show yeah. in recent years. Yeah, so in the last two years we've we've got a couple of accolades um, for the brands, for the boats. Um, we've left definitely, one thing I've learnt um, with the Boat Show Awards, it's it's about workmanship. Mm. Um, it's quality of the work, <coughs> the quality of the style, the finish of the boats. Um, it would be nice if they had a a, a test ride it would. part of it, but... Um, <laughs> That'll take a bit too much time up, um, and I think the general public need to know that it is about workmanship and quality. Yeah. And when you are buying a boat with an award, you know that the boat manufacturer is at the top of the game in, in New Zealand industry. That's right. So, yes, 10 years under your belt, Simon. You know, what are your plans for the next 10 years? Uh, retire? No. <laughs> 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 no. Um, no. The next 10 years is to, to grow the business. Um, we've got our first boat going to Australia next year. Great. Um, which, is, which is cool to be giving back to New Zealand, to the GDP. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And so we definitely want to start establishing a dealer network over in Australia or, or just shipping direct to Aussie and maybe we have a, our own facility, our own, our own yards in Australia. Okay. Um, so we want to grow at least to, to 100 boats a year. And I think the, the potential is definitely there. Definitely there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a, worthy, a worthy thing to be working towards. Well, yeah. we wish you all the best. Uh, Simon, with, um, with, with the years ahead and, uh, and Intervision Boats, I think they are, uh, it's, it's a brand that, that brings something quite different to the New Zealand market. And um, yeah, we wish you all the success. Cheers. Thanks, John. John Acklesame from Boating New Zealand. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to our channel.